with High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the ASUS Maximus 5 Gene motherboard BIOS. This is an ROG board, as you can see in the upper left hand side, and this BIOS will be very familiar for the whole Maximus Z77 series. So, you might have the same exact BIOS for the formula and whatever they decide to release after that. So, just taking a look at it right now, we're in easy mode. On the left hand side you can see the time and the date. You can see that going over to the right on the top you have the Maximus 5 Gene, BIOS version, CPU type, memory, t memory, your CPU speed. Below that we have our temperatures for our CPU and motherboard, voltages for our CPU and your, and your rails on your power supply. To the right of that is our fan speeds. Below that is system performance. We have normal, we have quiet, and energy saving mode. And of course, I mean normal or performance and quiet mode. Below the, that is the boot priority. Right now I have it set to boot the hard drive first and then the optical disk drive. On the bottom we see our shortcut keys, F3, advanced mode, boot menu, defaults. If we go up to the top here, we can go ahead and change this to advanced mode and we'll get into the advanced mode of the BIOS. Starting from the top, synchronizing target CPU turbo mode is 4800 MHz. Our DRAM target speed is 1600 MHz. This has a gamer's OC profile. Uh, it's, it's loaded inside of it. It's a pre-tuned profile from ASUS. Click on that and Basically, using CPU level up, you could performance tune your CPU or your system to uh, higher frequencies. As we go scroll down, we have our AI overclocking tuner. This needs to be set to manual when you are manually tuning your uh, tuning your your system. Base clock frequency, turbo ratio. Ratio synchronizing control, I just keep that on and enabled, and basically that synchronizes every core down here. As you can see, one core ratio limit, you could keep every single core the same. Just by putting in one number, you don't have to do all four. If you disable it, then you could change the, then you could change the numbers on each. Internal PLL over voltage, we have that enabled. And let's scroll this up a little bit here for you. CPU bus speed. We have our memory frequency, of course, different memory frequencies. The extreme tweaking, uh, extreme tweaker, I have that disabled. Then, if you are using your onboard video, you will get this display where it says IP, IGPU max, max frequency. This allows you to tune the onboard graphics of the Ivy Bridge processor. EPU power savings mode. We have our DRAM timing control. This is where we could put all our memory presets. We could change our memory timings. There's quite a few here. We have go down to third timings, miscellaneous, MRC fast boot, DRAM clock period, transmitter slews. These are things that you're not going to see on the regular segment boards from ASUS since the ROG is basically an enthusiast board. It's made for tweakers and there's a lot of th different things that you could do with this. Oops, excuse me. Let's go back. Alright, let's go to the GPU DIM post. This basically will tell you where you have your GPU and where you have your DIMMs populated. Right now I'm using the onboard video so I can show you the, the features in the BIOS, so that's why it's not showing a discrete video card. CPU power management. Once we click on that we get our CPU ratio, enhanced Intel speed step technology, turbo mode and our power limit control. 
our DigiPower control, which is something uh, that is very familiar with the ASUS motherboards now. Everything is digital. So going down from top to bottom, we have our CPU load line calibration. I have that set to high at this this time. I have the CPU voltage frequency set to no, to manual, and I have that set to 500. It does default to 300. Our phase control we do have different settings for as you can see auto standard optimized extreme and manual and with the load line calibration we also have the same CPU power duty control you have T-Prober extreme that is set to extreme at this time VRAM protection threshold I do have set to default and the current capability is set to 140 percent CPU power thermal control Basically, that's your CPU thermal control if you want to play with that when you're uh, performance tuning. You can go ahead. I suggest just leaving it at 130. And I haven't had a problem with it. Now we can see where our G iGPU load line calibration is. We could set that to auto regular high or extreme. And the current we could set to different settings also. DRAM current capability I have set to 100% the DRAM voltage frequency is set to set to auto that's either auto or manual if I go to manual mode it gives me options to change the OC range then we have our DRAM power phase control which I have set to optimize at this time and when we further scroll down we will get to our VCCIO. We have our switching frequency, our full phase control, and overcurrent protection. Once we get past that, we do have our extreme overvolt. You can enable or disable that. Then we have our regular voltages that we could manually adjust. CPU voltage, you have either manual mode or offset mode. Your IP, IGPU voltage, same way, manual or offset. DRAM voltage, VCCSA, VCCIO, CPU PLL voltage, screw driving voltage, skew driving voltage, second VCCIO voltage, and PCH voltage. If we go down further. There are, as you can see, there are a plethora of voltages to play with to fine-tune this motherboard. You have DRAM data reference voltages on all channels. You also has, have a base clock skew, a CPIO skew, a DMI skew, PLL skew, PCH clock driving skew, CPU spread spectrum, and base clock recovery. Moving to the main tab, this basically shows you your system information. This is where you can change your date and times and also security. If you feel like you need a password so nobody can get into your system, go ahead and set a security password. Advanced mode, Supreme FX3 lighting LED. This has the red line, this board, for the uh, sound card. It looks really nice and I like to keep it enabled so I can see it you can shut it off. There is an option. Going to CPU configuration, we have Intel Adaptive Therm Thermal Monitor, hyper-threading how many processors you want running, the limit CPU ID maximum, execute disable bit, the virtualization technology, if you are performance tuning, I suggest shutting that, shutting that off, hardware prefetcher, adjacent cache line prefetch, and then on the bottom we have our CPU management configuration which brings up, us up to our CPU ratio, speed step technology, and our turbo modes as well as our states. If you are performance tuning again, please shut off your C states, shut off the speed step technology. Moving down to the PCH, 
We have the high precision timer, timer Intel Rapid Start technology. Rapid Start technology basically makes this kind of like a like phone. It'll start fairly quickly and then we also have the Smart Connect technology. SATA configuration, ACHI, you can change that. IDE, ACHI arrayed. We do have two red SATA 6 ports. We have SATA 3 ports and we also have an external SATA and we have an M PCIe combo. The MPCIe combo is a new feature that ASUS is offering with uh, this type of a board and it's going to be on the formula also. And basically it's a little adapter where you can bo plug both in both a, a M SATA uh, SSD and your PCIe LAN card wireless LAN card into. So it's a little little bracket, plug that in and you could kind of uh, kill two birds with one stone there. Moving down to the system agent control, we have the memory and remap feature and then our graphics configuration, primary display driver, I have that on auto. Normally don't change it, if I really want to I can, but I just usually keep that on auto. Our iGPU memory, if we're using the onboard graphics, you can go from 64 to 1024. Render standby, and then we have our multi-monitor function. Now, it, I understand this says multi-monitor, but this is basically, yes, you can use multi-monitors, don't get me wrong, but basically this is to enable Lucid Logics, so you could use your discrete card and onboard video. Basically, it'll give you the option to use an I mode or a D mode. And both of those modes, I mode of course is Intel, D is discrete. Going back, we have our Northbridge PCIe configuration. And then we come to our USB configuration. Basically, legacy support on that. They have introduced the Intel XHCI mode. I keep that on Smart Auto. Your onboard devices, audio controllers, front panel types, SPDIF out, your as media storage controllers, USB 3.0 controllers, battery charging support, and of course the Intel LAN that is on this board. APM, all your powers, you know, how you're going to power it off, what you're going to do. And our network stack. Under monitor, of course, we could look at our monitoring features. Anti-surge support when you are performance tuning, shut that one off. We have our voltage monitor, or monitors all our voltages. Temperature monitor, of course, it's going to monitor temperatures fan speed monitor and our fan speed controller and of course you have one two three headers on there and a Q and, and two Q fan controls you have a CPU optional fan uh, header on this board so if you have a a heat sink that has two cords you don't have to put a you don't have to put a V connector on there you can plug it right in both both of your uh, both of your three pin or four pin connectors for each fan when we go to the to the boot tab you can see the boot up boot up number lock state I usually keep that on I want the number lock to be on because I'll end up messing up something using the the number keys if I'm in the BIOS or whatever. Full screen logo is enabled. Option ROM setup mode. Of course, I have this set because this is an you know enthusiast board. I'd rather load it up in advanced mode than easy mode. You UEFI legacy boot PCI ROM priorities. We have our boot options. I have it set to boot off my Patriot SSD and my second 
a drive, of course, is the Asus drive, which is a Blu-ray uh, Blu combo. Clicking on CBD, CD, DVD, we have our boot options for, the, for what ODD you want to boot up first, and our hard drive options. Under the tool setting, we have four settings. The Asus Easy Flash Utility. Basically, click on that. If you have a, uh, a USB thumb drive plugged in, keep your BIOS files on there. Tell it what file to flash it with, and it's basically automatic. There's really not much that you have to do with that. It's very quick and simple. The OC profile. This allows you to store up to eight profiles. Basically, right now, if I wanted to save the profile with the settings that I have right now, I'm going to go ahead and label it. I will save it to profile, and then it'll save it in the CMOS. It'll give it a number, and whenever I want to use this profile, I could I just come back here and load it. SPD information, of course this gives you all your inf information for your SPD on what DIMM slots you're using. As you can see I have them all populated, all four. Also gives you a, your XMPs. And then we have a go button file. Basically the go button file is something uh, that you can use to make sure that you have specific settings for your voltages, etc. And that is it. So let's go ahead and discard the changes. And these systems reboot pretty quickly. That's been our quick overview of the UEFI BIOS by ASUS for the ASUS Maximus 5 Gene motherboard. Thank you for watching. Stay thirsty, my friends. See you the next time. Bye-bye.